Welcome. I'm sorry the June video is a little later than usual, but it takes a lot longer to produce these with voiceover than without. We have a lot of events going on this month, so let's take a look and see what there is to see. On the 21st of June, we're going to have the summer solstice. It will occur at 10.52 UT. That's the longest day of the year for the Northern Hemisphere. The further north you go, the longer the day will be. So all of the Arctic Circle on that day will have a full day of sunlight. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's the opposite. It's going to be the shortest day of the year. June the 1st is the beginning of our meteorological summer. The seasons are created by the tilt of the Earth's spin axis with respect to the plane of the Earth's orbit, the ecliptic. The Earth's axis is tilted by 23.5 degrees with respect to its orbital plane. This means that sometimes of the year, the Earth's northern hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun. This is our summer. But what sort of summer are we in for? Is it going to be a long, hot summer? Well, it certainly seems so with an El Nino developing. According to NOAA, we are now officially in an El Nino watch period, with a 65% chance of an El Nino developing during the summer season. June the 1st is also the official beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season. However, with El Nino developing, there is a lower chance of large hurricanes forming. NOAA is forecasting 8 to 13 named storms in 2014, compared with a normal of 12, with 3 to 6 hurricanes, one or two of which could be large hurricanes, category 4 or above. The Pacific hurricane season is already well underway. We've had one storm, Amarda, which was briefly a Category 4 hurricane. In fact, it was almost at Category 5. However, it dissipated relatively quickly as it approached the Mexican coast. The full moon this month occurs on Friday the 13th of June. It's called the Rose Moon or the Strawberry Moon. We only have four encounters with asteroids this month. None of them get closer than the moon's distance and the largest one is only about half a kilometre across. How does NASA find all of these objects? There's a spacecraft called NEO-WISE, which is an infrared telescope that is used to scan the skies looking for asteroids. So far they've found 4700 with diameters greater than 100 meters. But unfortunately, that seems that it's only the tip of the iceberg. It's estimated that that 4700 represents only 20 to 30 percent of the near-Earth objects. We have three conjunctions in June. On June 7th, the Moon is in conjunction with Mars. On June 10th, the Moon occults Saturn, but that's only visible from the southern Indian Ocean. And on the 24th of June, the Moon is in conjunction with Venus. This actually may be a very good opportunity to be able to follow a planet during daylight. We have one meteor shower in June, the Bootids. This occurs between the 26th of June and the 2nd of July. They peak generally on the 27th of June. It's favourable because there's no moon. However, this is usually a fairly weak meteor shower, but has been known to reach 100 meteors per hour. Last but not least, the sun. At the moment, the sun has been fairly quiet with just a very few sea flares. But how long will it remain that way? The average May sunspot number is down from that of April. But the smooth sunspot number, which is calculated over a period of 13 months, is still increasing because the current values are significantly higher than they were 13 months ago. So the big question is when was or will be solar maximum? The date of solar maximum is determined by the peak of the smooth sunspot number. Currently the highest point on that curve is November of 2013, which is the most recent available date. However the folks that track solar maximum and solar minimum have two models that predict what the likely dates will be. One of their models is predicting that the maximum will be in February of 2014. However, the second one is predicting that it will likely peak in January of 2015. Whichever is right, and probably neither of them are, it's going to be an interesting time to watch what the sun is doing. So until then, happy observing.